Near the end of 2020, Red Hat decided to kill CentOS as we know it. Kind of. But for now, let's go ahead and take a look at Red Hat Enterprise Linux and all of the clones and forks that we have available to us. And first, of course, we have Red Hat Enterprise Linux, or RHEL for short, and believe it or not, this is a Linux distribution developed by Red Hat. RHEL is an RPM-based distribution that uses the DNF package manager and follows more of an LTS release cycle with an older package base. And RHEL's package base actually comes from an earlier version of Fedora, meaning that Fedora is kind of like a testing ground for many of the changes that may come to Red Hat Enterprise Linux in the future. For example, the latest version of RHEL 9.0 is based on Fedora 34 from March 2021. Do note though that while Fedora is sponsored by Red Hat and uses some of the Red Hat Enterprise Linux infrastructure, Fedora is still completely its own project and may actually make decisions against Red Hat. And another thing that makes RHEL kind of special is that a lot of the modern technology in the Linux world is actually funded by Red Hat or ran or heavily contributed to by Red Hat developers. And there are a bunch of examples of this, including the GNOME Shell, SC Linux, SystemD, Package Kit, Wayland, Dbus, and many other projects. However, the main thing that makes Red Hat Enterprise Linux different than a lot of the others is the fact that it is a paid Linux distribution. Paying for it gives you access to documentation and support directly from Red Hat. And this is where CentOS or CentOS came in, as many people are just fine with community documentation and support, so a rebuild of RHEL was formed and called CentOS. CentOS essentially took Red Hat's source code, removed a lot of the branding, used its own repositories, and then compiled it themselves. So if you needed Red Hat Enterprise Linux but didn't care about the support, you just went ahead and installed CentOS on whatever server or infrastructure that you have. Red Hat later bought the project out, and for the most part, things just kept running smoothly. But about halfway through the release cycle of CentOS 8, Red Hat decided to stop supporting the project, resulting in many people considering that to be the death of CentOS. And this resulted in many of the RHEL rebuilds and clones that we see today, such as Alma Linux, Rocky Linux, and a couple others that we will be getting into a little bit later. However, the death of CentOS was kind of overblown because it was actually just replaced with CentOS Stream. And the whole release of CentOS Stream was severely miscommunicated with the users. And CentOS Stream is essentially just RHEL with one huge difference. Instead of small fixes and changes needed to be put into Red Hat Enterprise Linux, it was flipped, as this would be implemented into CentOS Stream first and then RHEL second. This made contributing to both CentOS and RHEL much easier because you wouldn't have to deal with the bureaucracy that comes with trying to contribute to a paid distribution. And the overall issue with communication is they kind of pushed Stream to be a completely different thing when it really wasn't. Not many people really knew how it worked and just because of the naming scheme of Stream, it kind of sounded like a, a rolling release distribution, which for people who have Red Hat Enterprise Linux on their servers is not what they want. And killing CentOS halfway through the eight release cycle, making people migrate to a whole entire new branch of CentOS ju just really isn't a good look for something that was supposed to be an LTS distribution. To me, these are changes that could have been made in CentOS 9. With this, the damage of bad rebranding with CentOS Stream has already been done, and now there are a ton of options if you want that Red Hat Enterprise Linux experience. But before we get into those, we need to thank the sponsor of today's video, Linode, which actually has a lot of these as uh, options within their distribution selector. Now, just real quick, I've been using Linode forever for web hosting, hosting game servers, Nextcloud instances, a whole bunch of things. They make it incredibly easy. Basically, you just pick your operating system, pick your plan starting at $5 a month, and then you are in. You get an IP address, you are in the terminal, and you can do what you need to do. If you want something even easier, you can use a wide variety of their one-click installers to get some of these services that I mentioned just a little bit ago up and running with ease. They have fantastic customer support. There's a large community around them. And if you use the link down below or just go to linode.com forward slash tech hut, you could get a hundred dollar 60 day credit to get started today. So with that, we're going to talk about the distributions that are backed by Red Hat. Specifically, we have two of them. RHEL Free and of course CentOS Stream. RHEL Free is a free program for individual users and with this it does have limitations. For example, you can only register up to 16 machines running this, but it does give you access to all the Red Hat Enterprise Linux releases, as well as their documentation and resources to actually learn how to use the system. So as a learning tool in general, this is a fantastic resource. 
However, if you just want to use this as a personal use case and you just need something set up quick, I'd recommend using some other system as RHEL Free is kind of a hassle to set up, mainly because you need to make an account to download it and once you installed it, you need to register it with an entitlement server. Now, CentOS Stream, on the other hand, is a great option if you need a RHEL-like server, although this isn't an exact clone like a lot of these other distributions are going to be. Now, while CentOS Stream, for the most part, will function exactly like RHEL, it's still kind of used as a development ground, meaning it won't be 100% bug for bug compatible with Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And I'll get more into what bug for bug means a little bit later, but essentially if you don't want to use like an Ubuntu or a Debian for a web server, you prefer a RHEL type system, CentOS Stream is a fantastic option to look at. You get rock solid stability, it's still close enough to RHEL that if you're familiar with the environment you're not going to need to learn much at all, and you'll actually get some bug fixes and updates slightly faster than RHEL. So next up, let's go ahead and talk about some of the community-backed RHEL rebuilds. Some of these may have a few extra small bonus features, but for the most part, they are just RHEL with different repositories, a rebrand, and community support instead of the corporate support. And all of these should be bug-for-bug -bug compatible with RHEL, which means a vast majority of the packages should be identical to an installation of Red Hat, and if a bug exists in RHEL, it should also exist in these rebuilds. And first, we're going to start with Rocky Linux. Now, this is a distro that emerged after the aftermath of the death of CentOS and aimed to fill the void that CentOS left. The company that runs everything is the Rocky Enterprise Software Foundation, and it is structured as a public benefit corporation. And because it's a corporate structure, it does move a little slower than other distributions, such as Alma Linux, which came with its rebuild of RHEL 9 more than a month before Rocky Linux. Speaking of Alma Linux, this is another one that came after the death of CentOS, and this was started and funded by Cloud Linux, but it became a community project that also has major funding from companies like AWS, ARM, and Microsoft. Unlike Rocky, and despite being backed by Cloud Linux, Alma Linux is ran by a 501 nonprofit. And like we said, it does seem to be a little quicker with the updates as it only took nine days for its rebuild of RHEL 9 after its release. And because of it having more backing, a fast schedule with releases and some other factors, it kind of has become one of the most popular community-backed RHEL clones out there today. So now we're going to take a look at some corporate-backed RHEL projects. These are not community-ran, and most of these have actually existed for years before the death of CentOS. And probably the biggest and most widely known is going to be Oracle Linux. This is another rebuild of Red Hat with replaced branding for the most part. However, do keep note that it is not 100% binary compatible, and there are differences in some of the packages. For example, Oracle ships its quote-unquote unbreakable enterprise kernel with newer kernel versions and some performance enhancements, however a RHEL compatible kernel is still offered. And there are some major differences in other core components such as glibc, OpenSSL, and a couple others. And another corporate back distribution is Eurolinux, which again is a RHEL rebuild, by a company of the same name. Eurolinux is one-to-one -one bug compatible with RHEL, and the Eurolinux company does provide support for their distribution. And they also have migration scripts for RHEL, CentOS, Oracle Linux, Rocky, and Alma Linux. They do have a free version that you can use as a RHEL rebuild, but they do have paid versions that gives you access to the RHEL 6 and 7 based versions of Eurolinux, full support and access to intermediate packages and documentation. And finally, we have a VZ Linux, which is owned by Vert, Uozo, I get, I'm probably saying these wrong, which is made to be a base for their own operating systems such as OpenVZ. It's one-to-one -one compatible with Red Hat Enterprise, and it does have multiple flavors with a standard bare metal version, but also has a special version for containers and virtual environments. It also has a feature called Chameleon, which edits the OS release file to look either like RHEL or CentOS. This is really good for software like cPanel that will only install on software or distributions that it actually supports. However, I do have a feeling that because the company backing it is actually using it themselves, it's the main reason it's actually being maintained. Outside of its own product line, there's very little amount of documentation for it. Updates are slow and the website for it seems to be more of a landing page rather than a website for a distribution. Like seriously, I couldn't find 
basic information such as the life cycle, and I could find barely any mentions of older releases of this distribution. Now those are the main distributions that can be used as just a drop in replacement for CentOS or even Red Hat Linux. So what I'm going to do now is talk about some other distributions that will kind of give you a similar experience, but uh, for some reason or another I, I may not recommend. So let's start with Navy and Circle Linux. Navy Linux is a, another Red Hat rebuild from a Delaware nonprofit. Now, I don't recommend this because there's an actual issue with the distribution, more or less because it's just a smaller project. It has very few corporate sponsors, it only has five repositories on GitHub, with only two of them being updated in the last 30 days, at least as of writing this. And of those two repos, one of them is the website and the other is just a Docker image. At the time of writing this, Navy Linux does not have a rebuild of Rail 9 yet, and the website has a notable lack of information. Circle Linux is a little better, it's a Chinese-based community RAN distribution, but there are some uh, prominent corporate backers that may be concerning to some people. It took them quite a while to come out with their rebuild of Rail 9, and there's really not much that makes you want to use it over Alma or Rocky Linux. On top of that, I wanted to go into their chat and ask some questions for this video. And they supposedly have a public Slack channel, but with just how it's set up, I simply could not join. Both of these are binary compatible with RHEL, but due to the fact that they're just much smaller projects, you're not going to see that community support or documentation that you would get with some of the others that we mentioned earlier. And honestly, if something dramatic changes, I don't see these two lasting very long. Very last little honorable mention I must give is Fedora. Fedora is not really a Red Hat clone, rebuild fork, or anything like that, but I'm going to give it a little mention because it has a lot of good use cases and the system structure is very similar. Fedora is the upstream for CentOS Stream before CentOS Stream becomes RHEL. So brand new Fedora releases contain a lot of tech and features that will probably become part of RHEL in the future, but it's very important to keep in mind that this is not even close to being binary compatible with RHEL. However, if you want to run a server with newer packages but still have the RHEL CentOS feel, Fedora is a good option. I always recommend Fedora or Fedora-based systems for your desktop, and honestly, especially for like home lab stuff, Fedora as a server is magnificent. It even has some really handy tools pre-installed that I definitely appreciate. Now, I will note that this video will have a companion piece over on TechCut.tv where you can see a full chart of basically everything that I've mentioned here, so you could go ahead and compare the release cycle, compatibility, who owns it, and much more information. So a link to that will be down below, and generally for my picks, if you're somebody who is getting into kind of the sysadmin space and you're trying to learn for a job, rel free is probably the perfect way to go as you'll have access to the documentation, you'll get really familiar with the exact system you're going to be playing around in, that is what you should probably use. If you're trying to self-host some things, you're trying to pick a perfect distribution for maybe your small business, probably CentOS Stream or even Alma Linux are going to be perfect picks. And because of Alma being a non-profit, it's probably my preferred RHEL clone that you could go with. And of course, if you're going to have something in your home network for a home lab, my choice is obviously Fedora. <laughs> with that, down below will be the link to the full companion article, which you should check out. And on that article, there'll be a little subscribe button in the bottom right corner. Click that, put in your email, and you'll get some wonderful weekly or bi-weekly newsletters, giving you a rundown of the latest and greatest in Linux, open source, and just general technology news. With that, big thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Linode, $100 free credit down below. And with all that, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day, and goodbye.